wonderful successes. Miria Kaposa, Mataya Kapanta Kilia, Maraka Paso Kapahataya, Malay Kamanta. There are some of you, your, your health has been ravaged by the powers of darkness. Your career and your job has been ravaged by the demons of hell. Whatever that is in your hands, God is going to increase it. I said whatever that is in your hands. You are awesome in this place. You're magnificent in this place. that you are the black sheep of the family and you, you are a non-entity and you will not amount to anything. God must hear that tonight and divinely compensate you. on your left and on your right Bishop Melba and First Lady sit here please kindly give a round of applause to my very good friend and brother Bishop Percy Melba and the wife hallelujah amen and amen I want you to look at the person that is standing on your left and on your right and tell the person God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Voice of triumph, a round of applause. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, before you are seated, last week I started a series entitled, If You Are Not Speaking to Yourself, You Are Crazy. If You Are Not Speaking to Yourself, You Are Crazy. So, this morning, I want to do the part two of that message. And I want to title it, Speaking to Myself Doesn't Make Me Crazy. Speaking to Myself Doesn't Make Me Crazy. So, look at somebody and tell the person, Speaking to Myself Doesn't Make Me Crazy. They didn't hear what you said. And so you will tell them again. Look at them eyeball to eyeball, shoulder to shoulder, and tell them, speaking to myself doesn't make me crazy. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated in the heavenly uh, places. So last week, I made you to understand that the world and psychologists believe that if you speak to yourself, then you have mental issues. You are suffering from psychosis. You, you are goofy. You are ridiculous. You, you are lunatic. That is what they believe. 
speaking to yourself. So one of the things that we usually do is that we do everything to make sure that people don't see us speaking to ourselves. So hardly will you find somebody in the public domain speaking to himself or herself. You see, speaking to people is very easy. Speaking to things is very easy. But it is not easy for you to speak to yourself because of the notion that people have concerning people that speaks to themselves. They will call you insane. They will tell you you have gone cuckoo. They will call you a madman. They will call you a mad woman. But this morning, I am coming to you from the volumes of the book that if you are not speaking to yourself, it actually makes you crazy. If you are not speaking to yourself, it makes you crazy. You must learn how to speak to yourself. It is good to speak to God in prayer. It is great to speak back at the devil when the devil speaks to you. When the devil speaks to you, you make a counter declaration. For instance, the devil tells you that you will die. You tell the devil, I will not die, but I will live to declare the works of the Lord. The devil speaks to you and tells you that you are a failure. And then you look back at the devil and you tell the devil you are success personified. You see, all these things, it is easy to do it. It is rational to do it. It is sensible. It is logic to do it. It is also spiritual to do it. But oftentimes, speaking to yourself, we do everything and anything to avoid it because of the perception of people, the mentality of people, the notion of people, and what psychologists say concerning people that speaks to themselves. But I am going to show you in the scriptures that there comes a time in your life that you must learn how to speak to yourself. You see, if you are looking for somebody to empower you, you may never get it. Because the person that you are looking for to empower you, that person also is looking for somebody to empower him or to empower her. That is why it is imperative. It is of utmost importance to learn how to empower yourself, encourage yourself by speaking to yourself. So last week, I gave you a typical example when King David and his mighty men and the armies of Israel went into battle. They won the battle, they returned back. When they came back, their wives and their children have been taken captive. And the Bible says that the soldiers and his mighty men turned against him and wanting to stone him to death. The Bible says that David looked at the condition, the situation, and David spoke to himself. Spoke to himself. So the King James put it this way. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. What it simply means is that David spoke to himself. David said to himself, in spite of what they think of me, in spite of the conclusion that they have come to, and as a result, they want to stone me to death. I empower and encourage myself to say to myself that our wives and our children that have been taken captive, you, oh God, will empower me to rescue all of them. You must learn how to speak to yourself. Now, before we go deep into it, 
I want to say this. You must speak to yourself, but don't listen to yourself. You must speak to yourself, but don't listen to yourself. Now, the reason why you should listen to yourself, I'm just going to give you a typical, normal example and analogy. There are so many of you in the height that you are supposed to attain and you have not come to the place that God wants you to be because you listen to yourself. There are projects that has been abandoned. There are projects that has become stagnant and stationary and there is no progress and advancement and fulfillment and accomplishment because you are listening to yourself. You just came back from work. Your body is tired. This is your body speaking to you. You have worked for 12 hours. Your body is giving up. Why do you have to continue writing that manuscript? Why do you have to look over that project? Your body is saying to you, I need rest. I need to sleep. I need to go to this place, that place. And oftentimes, if you listen to what your body is saying to you, you will not be able to achieve anything. You will not be able to become great. And so, as much as you speak to yourself, don't listen to yourself. Because yourself sometimes will tell you, look at how thick you are. I don't want to offend anybody, so I want to use thick. Somebody say thick. Look at, look at how thick you are. Do you think that you will be able to make it? You don't have college degree. Do you think that that dream and that vision will actualize and materialize? Your body will be speaking to you and will start telling you, look at the family. Where you want to get to, have you ever seen anybody in the family that has gotten to that place? This is your body speaking to you. So, oftentimes, when you listen to yourself, you will not be able to speak to yourself. Moses listened to himself and he told God, the creator of the tongue, the creator that wasn't created, and said to him, I'm a stutterer. I can't speak. I don't talk. I'm a quiet person. I'm a stutterer. The reason why Moses said what he said to God was because he was listening to himself. Anytime you listen to yourself, you will miss the miracle. Anytime you listen to yourself, you are going to miss your breakthrough. Anytime you listen to yourself, it is going to cripple you, paralyze you. It is going to reduce you to nothingness because oftentimes what your body says to you, it is contrary to what God is saying concerning your life, concerning your destiny, concerning your purpose, and concerning the essence of your existence. So, don't listen to yourself, but rather speak to yourself. For instance, when David said in Psalm 23, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. He wasn't praying. It wasn't a prayer. When he said, the Lord is my shepherd, he wasn't preaching. He wasn't teaching. He was speaking to himself. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the 
the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. All that he was speaking to himself. Then he came to Psalm 27 and he said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, my enemies, even my foes, come up against me, they stumble and they fall. The wicked and camp run about me to eat my flesh. And again, they stumble and they fall. So, when you look at Psalm 27, the verse number 1 up to the verse number 6, David was speaking to himself. And then when it got to the verse 7, he started speaking to God. Project it for me. Let me show you. Psalm 27. Watch this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He is speaking to himself. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let's continue. When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Let's continue. He's still speaking to himself. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. My heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. He is still speaking to himself. Let's continue. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Let's continue. For in the time of trouble, all this, he is speaking to himself. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me, he shall set me high. Upon a rock. All this. He wasn't speaking. To the children of the Israelites. He wasn't speaking. To any human being. He wasn't speaking. To things. He was speaking. To himself. Let's continue. The verse 6. And now. My head. And now. My head. Shall be lifted up. Above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. That is where it ends. When he was speaking to himself. And then the verse 7, he started praying, speaking to God. Let me show you that. He said, hear, O Lord. So he wasn't speaking to himself. At this time, he was speaking to the Lord. So he said, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. Listen, we are living in a world of challenges. We are living in a world of complexities, hardships, difficulties, war 
affairs and attacks. And the only way sometimes to prevail, to overcome, and to lift up your head above the waters is to speak to yourself. Is to speak to yourself. Is to speak to yourself. The breakthrough has not happened yet because you have not spoken to yourself. The heavens above you have not yet opened because you have not yet spoken to yourself. There is nothing so powerful. There is nothing so empowering, encouraging, motivating, stimulating like you speaking to yourself. Speaking to yourself doesn't make you crazy. Somebody caught this revelation and spoke to himself concerning a situation that he was in. He was so poor. Very Had nothing to his name. And this revelation. And said to himself. I cannot be poor. I cannot be poor. He didn't say it to God. He didn't say it to anybody. He said it to himself. I cannot be poor. And because of that declaration and proclamation to himself. Today. This man is a preacher and today is one of the most wealthiest preachers on the earth. If not the most wealthy preacher on earth. Because he spoke to himself. Sometimes when it looks like you are coming to a breaking point. When it looks like hope is fading. When it looks like the doors has been shut. When it looks like you are in a tight place. When it looks like everything is obscure and, 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 and it's challenging and, and it's overwhelming. You must learn how to speak to yourself. One of the things I say to myself, I say Pastor Grant, God didn't bring you to the planet earth and strategically position you in Georgia to be a failure and to be an non-entity. Pastor Grant, you are here for a divine purpose. And until you fulfill that divine purpose, there is no storm. There is no adversity. There is no any onslaught or any attacks of the enemy that can keep you down or break you. And so, Pastor Grant, Stand up and I will stand up. Lift up your head and I will lift up my head. And I will say, Pastor Grant, lift up your shoulders because you are an overcomer. You are victorious. You have prevailed and you have triumphed. In spite of the prevailing circumstances and situation, just know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And sometimes I speak to myself when I feel like my enemies and my foes are enormous. And I look at myself and I say to myself, Pastor Grant, those who are with you, they are more than those who are against you. Pastor Grant, be still and see the salvation of God. Be still and witness and experience the deliverance of the Almighty. You must learn how to speak to yourself. And speaking to yourself doesn't make you crazy. It doesn't make me crazy. I am going to show you in the scriptures people who had breakthrough and deliverance. People who were repositioned for greatness. People who were repositioned to the alignment of God's will as a result of them 
speaking to themselves. Look at somebody and tell the person, speaking to yourself doesn't make you crazy. I want you to quickly turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 9, the verse number 21. Matthew 9, the verse number 21. Matthew 9, 21. Look at what Matthew 9, 21 says. It says, it says, for she said to herself. Who said to herself? The woman with the issue of blood. Now watch this. For 12 years, she had had this issue of blood. And according to the Levitical law, she wasn't supposed to be in the midst of people. She wasn't supposed to have contact with anybody. And nobody is supposed to have contact with her. She was secluded, isolated. She was ostracized, relegated to the background. She was carried outside of the city to the gates of the city, isolated. The Bible says that she has squandered that she had because of this hemorrhaging. And the Bible says that one day she heard that Jesus was in town. And when she heard that Jesus was in town, this is what she did. Matthew 9, 21. For she said to herself, did she say to Jesus, no, executive class. I'm your executive teacher. So if I say something, I expect you to respond. For she said to herself, did she say anything to Jesus? Did she say anything to his anything to her friends. What did she do? She spoke to herself. Because the condition that she was, there was nobody to talk to. There was nobody to speak to. Sometimes when you find yourself depressed, when you find yourself suppressed and oppressed by the storms of life, lame how to speak to yourself. In speaking to yourself, you change your atmosphere. In speaking to yourself, you change your environment. In speaking to yourself, you infuse and inject into yourself the divine supernatural empowerment of the almighty. When you speak to yourself, for she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made whole. If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made whole. When she spoke to herself, she made a move. Because what she said to herself gave her the strength. What she said to herself gave her the enablement. What she said to herself empowered her. What she said to herself infused her to have the ability and to walk. And it was true speaking to herself that brought her deliverance. That brought her miracle. That brought her breakthrough to the extent that Jesus tested to the faith by which she operated in. And she said, I have never seen such a faith like this woman's faith. And the faith stems from the place of her speaking to herself. Sometimes you must look at yourself and say to yourself, my dad failed, my mom failed. My siblings have failed. My cousins are failing. But not me. I am exempted. You must look at yourself 
and say to yourself, I'm an agent of change. I am a pace setter. I am a trailblazer. I am an embodiment of greatness. I will not go down to the grave until I have become everything that God wants me to become. So let me tell you some of the things that I say to myself. I say to myself each and every day and I say it with screaming. After I say it, the empowerment is too much. And sometimes I will be there and say, hey, I did some this morning. They all came out looking at me. I say to myself, Pastor Grant, you are not moved by anything that is happening. This city is yours. They may not know it, but they will see it very shortly. This state is yours. This state and this nation has produced great men. Powerful and anointed men, but they have not seen your kind. I am speaking to myself. And I will say to myself, I said, the traffic is headed to prayer city. In this state and in this city. Where you mention notable people in Georgia and you didn't mention Raphael Grant, the list is not ended. I say to myself, a revival is coming to this nation. And that revival is coming through Georgia. And in Georgia, it will be coming through prayer city. And you, Pastor Grant, you will spearhead it. By the time I finish speaking to myself, I am so empowered that I begin to laugh at myself. <laughs> Do it my way. <laughs> Come on. Speaking to yourself doesn't make you crazy. You remember the prodigal son? Do you know what made him return back to his father? After he has taken the portion of his inheritance and he has squandered the inheritance and was now eating pigs, food that is meant for animals. That was what he was eating. And there he spoke to himself. I want you to quickly turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 15, the verse number 17. And 18. Luke chapter 15, the verse number 17 and 18. Just stay with me. I'm taking you somewhere. It says, But when he came to himself, when he came to what? Himself. Watch this. He said to himself, How many? Of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. Verse 18. Flow with me. I will. Who is he speaking to? Is it the animals? Is it the pigs? Is it somebody? He was speaking to himself. And this is what he said. I will arise. Hey, sometimes when you find yourself in the valley, speak to yourself. I will arise. When you find yourself in the sinking place, in the drowning place, don't wait for any prophet to prophesy to you. Don't wait for any bishop or any apostle or archbishop to speak into your life. Begin to speak. To yourself that you will rise. You will rise. He said, I will rise and go to my father and will say to him, still speaking to himself, Father, 
I have sinned against heaven and before you. When he spoke to himself, his deliverance and breakthrough came. He was restored. He was brought back to his status. In fact, higher than before. Why? Because he spoke to himself. When you are being accused, when people fabricate stories, cook up stories fictitiously against you to slander you, to character assassinate you, and to smear your name in the mud. You must learn how to speak to yourself. And I will tell you the reason why you must learn how to speak to yourself. Do you remember the woman that was caught in the adultery? How many of you remember? The woman that was caught in the adultery. The woman was fleeing and fled to the presence of Jesus. And there were people that were pursuing him to stone her. When they got to Jesus and they were getting ready to throw their stone, the Bible says in King James, Jesus said, let him without a sin cast the first stone. But the Greek says, let him without the same sin cast the first stone. And so, it is not let him without a sin. It's let him without the same sin cast the first stone. I have come to realize, oftentimes, what people accuse you of, they are guilty of. I want to say it again. Oftentimes, what people accuse you of, they are guilty of. That is why you must learn how to shake it off by speaking to yourself. Sometimes I look at myself and say, what they are saying, they are saying it about themselves. They don't know me, I know me. I look at myself in the mirror. I say, Pastor Grant, you are so fine, boy. And I will stand, look at myself. Pastor Grant, you are so fine. Everything that they are saying is a lie. I will look at myself and I will say, they want me fail. But Pastor Grant, you are succeeding. You are blowing their mind. You have become an enigma, a mystery. They are trying to demystify you, but they are not able. They are trying to decode you, but they are not able. All these attacks against you, against your ministry, it is because they are trying to figure you out, and they cannot figure you out. And I will look at myself and say, Pastor Grant, you are too much. You are too much. By the time I finish talking to myself, I feel like I can take any mountain. I feel like I can overcome any storm. I can overcome any adversity. I can use a jawbone like a Samson to kill a thousand soldiers. Speaking to yourself. It make you crazy. You must learn how to speak to yourself. I'm looking, you have been looking for a job. The job is not coming. You must learn how to speak to yourself and say to yourself, look at this qualified young man. Look at this qualified young woman, level-headed, full of wisdom, intelligent. All these companies that are not calling me back, they are missing out in a very big...
big way. They will live to regrets. But I know that company that I have been desiring to work for, to looking for me, they will be blowing my phone. They will blast my email. They will blast my phone with text messages. I am employed. I am hired. I occupy that position with a great pay. I will no longer squat with people. I will no longer perch with people. I have my house with my own keys. I will no longer call people for ride. I am driving my dream car. I may not be where I want to be right now. But I am coming. You must learn how to speak to yourself. You have a savior. You have an advocator. You have intercessor that is standing in the gap for you. That is speaking in the court of justice of heaven on your behalf. You won't end like this. I want to say it again. You will not end like this. It is not your portion. It is not your portion. You are a miracle with a capital M. In the midst of it all, everything is coming together. Why do you think God will abandon you? Why do you think God will forsake you? Why do you think God will leave you? God never abandoned his own. God never forsakes his own. He said, when you go through the fire, I, the Lord, I will be with you. When you go through the waters, I will be with you so that you will not drown. I am talking about Jehovah. I am talking about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I'm talking about the ancient of days. I am talking about your provider, my provider. I am talking about the one who supplies all our needs. I am talking about our bulwark, our defense. I'm talking about our strong tower, our stronghold. I am talking about the weapons of our warfare. I'm talking about the warrior who fights for us. He is the captain of the host of the armies of heaven. I like it when John put it this way. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Became flesh and tabernacle among men. That particular scripture, it talks about the pre-existent of God, Jesus. And the co-existence of Jesus and the self-existent of Jesus. So watch this. In the beginning was the word pre-existence. And the word was with God. Co-existence. And the word was God. Self-existence. The God that we are serving. He is pre-existent, co-existence, and self-existence. He lives in the past. At the same time, present. And at the same time, lives in the future. The Bible puts it very beautifully. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then I want to submit to you. He knows where you are going to end up. And where you are going to end up is not a tragedy. Where you are going to end up, it is not disgrace and shame and reproach. Where you are going to end up, it is not tears and pain and sorrow and grief. Where you are going to end up is laughter. That is why he said all things, not some things. All things for you as a believer, 
will work together for your good. To them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. One day, Paul looked at himself and started speaking to himself. And do you know what he started saying to himself? The guy was on fire. The Apostle Paul is one of the people. Immediately I get to heaven. I'm going to ask, where is Apostle Paul? I love the guy. The radicality of the guy. The, his love for God. His passion for God. His tenacity. Very ferocious. Mighty, powerful, but yet humble. He said to himself, when he started speaking to himself, who can separate you from the love of Christ? He was speaking to him. Who, who, who can separate you? He was saying, Apostle Paul, what is it that can separate you from the love of Christ? He was speaking to himself. He said, is it principalities? Is it powers? Is it thrones? Is it dominions? Is it life? Is it death? Is it peril? Is it persecution? Is it affliction? What is it that can separate you from the love of Christ? And then he said to himself, there are some of us, we are accounted as a sheep to the slaughter. But nay, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror. Speaking to yourself. There are some of us, we are standing today because we have been speaking to ourselves. You think the arrows don't come? They come. You think the accusations and the lies don't come? They come. The restlessness, it comes. The sleepless night, it comes. The tears, it comes. Depression, it comes. Exhausted. Sick and tired. But what keeps us standing? Because we constantly speak to ourselves. We constantly speak to ourselves. And I have come to find out in scripture. That you become what you speak. You manifest what you speak to yourself. You actualize. You bring to fruition what you speak to yourself. Until you speak to yourself, you will not become. What makes you to become is what you say to yourself. Even God spoke to himself. It is God that started speaking to himself and we followed suit. During the building of the tower of Babel, when they were building this skyscraper that will reach the heavens and come to God. And the Bible says that the vision and the dream and the determination that they have there is absolutely nothing that can stop them from achieving their purpose and their goal. And for the first time, God spoke to himself. He said, let us. He wasn't speaking to other people because God is the triune God. The triune God. God, who is one, but in three personalities. 
So when he said, let us go down, he was speaking to himself. Let us go down and stop him. Until you speak to yourself that this stagnation must stop. It will never stop. Until you speak to yourself and say to yourself, this delay and disappointment must stop. It will never stop. Until you speak to yourself and declare, I have crossed over the wilderness. I have crossed over the desert places and the patched places of life. I am in my Cana. I am flows with milk and honey. You will never experience milk and honey. Speaking to yourself doesn't make you crazy. The doctors have said that this sickness is unto death. That is what they said to you. But what are you saying to yourself? Concerning the matter. Concerning the situation. This is what they are saying. But this is what I am saying. That this sickness has a cure. It has a cure because my primary physician is the physician of all physicians. They may say that there is no balm in Gilead, but I know that there is balm in Gilead. They may say that God has stopped in the healing business. But I know that my God is still in the healing business. Until you speak to yourself, your breakthrough ain't happening. You must learn how to speak to yourself. You don't need anybody to have a conversation with. Learn to have a conversation with yourself. My children will not be wayward. My children will not be a liability to their generation, to their community, and to their family. You must look to yourself. They will be great. They will be notable. They will influence their generation and the generations yet unborn. No activity of the enemy, no plan of the enemy can interfere, interrupt, obstruct, or redirect the destiny of my children. Speak to yourself. You are waiting for the green car. But when you speak to yourself, you speak to yourself as a citizen. Your document has not been processed. The only thing he says that when you check, we have received. But when you speak to yourself, you speak to yourself. I'm a U.S. citizen. I don't care what immigration says. That is who I am. are waiting for empowerment. It's not coming. You are waiting for Pastor Grant to prophesy and nothing is happening. You are waiting for the Lord to speak to you and he's not speaking. You are waiting for God to speak to you through dreams and visions and nothing is happening. Why don't you begin to speak to yourself? What you started, you will finish it. Say it to yourself. The hands of Zerubbabel have not it. And that same hands will finish it. Whatever I have laid my hands to, I will finish it. I will complete it. I will perfect it. Sometimes you must learn how to speak to yourself and say to yourself, I didn't come to this earth to come and escort others. Look at yourself and say to yourself, I am great. I am a celebrity. 
I am blessed. I am prosperous. Favor is upon me. Miracles follows me wherever I go. Testimonies follows me wherever I go. And so I will sing unto my Lord. I will rejoice in his goodness. Let my soul rise. Let my soul celebrate the goodness of God. The prophetess by the name of Deborah did the same thing. In Judges chapter 5, the verse number 20 and 21. They have won the battle. And she said, even the stars fought for us. He said, they fought from the heavens. The stars from their causes fought against Sisera. The stars fought. I don't have time to talk to you about the elements. Call it the governmental prayer using the elements. He said, The stars from heaven has fought for us against Sisera. And look at what he, she said in verse 21. Give me the 21. He said, The torrent of Kishon swept them away. The torrent, the river, the stream of Kishon swept them away. And then she started speaking to herself. He said, she said, oh my soul, much on in strength. Oh my soul, much on in strength. Sometimes when you are weary and you are tired, when you are exhausted, when you have been battered and shattered and bruised, by the challenges of life and you feel like quitting and you feel like throwing in the towel, say to your soul, rise and march forward. My soul, rise and march forward. If you speak to yourself, you are not crazy. Look at somebody and tell the person, I ain't crazy when I speak to myself. Oh, what they hearing? I ain't crazy when I speak to myself. You ain't crazy. I want you to lift up your hands unto heaven. I want you to begin to speak to yourself. Speak to yourself the blessings. Speak to yourself the favor. Speak to yourself prosperity. Speak to yourself peace, rest. Speak to yourself joy. Speak your divine turn around. Speak your supernatural turn around. Speak your miracle. Open your mouth and speak to yourself. The hair of something will grow again. Your hair will grow again. I said your hair will grow again. Restoration is coming to you. Open your mouth and pray. He has made the straight path before me. Pray, 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 pray. I want to hear them. Open your mouth and pray. You are speaking to yourself. I am an overcomer. 
I am victorious. I won't lose my job. I will get this new job and this new position. I am not barren. I will conceive. My debts are being cancelled supernaturally right now. There is a divine provision for me. There is a supernatural supply for me. God is doing something in my life that he has never done before. What I am afraid of will not happen to me. My God is the lifted up of my head. This is my time. This is my season. This is my moment. You are showing me your glory. You are showing me your goodness. You are perfecting that which concerns me. Open your mouth. Speak to yourself. Your atmosphere is changing. Your, your environment is changing. There is a divine supernatural shift that is taking place right now. A divine release from every hole, from every clutches of the enemy. Shackles are being broken. Chains are being broken. You are coming out from every imprisonment. Restrictions are being removed. Limitations are being removed. Healing is taking place. Deliverances are taking place right now as we speak. Is wiping the tears, putting a smile on your face. He who has begun a good work in me will surely complete it. He will perfect it. He will finish it. He will bring it to a full term. Open your mouth and continue to speak. Continue to speak. Continue to declare. Continue to decree. He did it before. And he is doing it again. They are waiting for your shame, but they will wait forever. They are waiting for your fall, but they are going to wait forever. They are waiting for your demise, but they are going to wait forever. Because something is moving. Something is shifting right now. Matayasukamahantuakapahaya Moria suka mahanta kiliya kataya kaboa. 
Maraka pasuka mahanta Malia kapata kalia kataya Hey shaka bahanta Mapalu wakabiba bahanta Laka bibi asuka mahanta Raka pata kalia Mapelia mapanto wakapea Laka bibi akataya Somebody clap your hands And begin to pray Mapalia Mapataka Hey shaka pa Malia kapanto wakapea Maraka pati Kataya, Pali Akatoka Paya, Mapalu Asoka Mahasha, Palu Akape Papaya, Mapari Akatoka Paya, Mali Akapata Kali Akataya, Mapato Kapaya, Maraka Pasota Mahanta, Lika Mahanta Kapaya, Palu Akapo Papaya, Maraka Pata Kali Akata, Balesa Kata, Mapo Papa, Maraka Pato Akapaya, Maraka Pali Akatoka. Oh, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice in prayer. Lift up your voice in prayer. Mapelia, Mapasto Akapaya. Your story must change. Your life must change. Your testimony must be released. Your breakthrough must be released. Your deliverance must happen now. Alias, open your mouth and pray. Yes, Oh, my God. 
like a rain and I hear the Lord saying tell my people that the healing river is flowing the healing river is flowing amongst them the river of my deliverance the wind of my salvation is blowing everywhere. I am fixing what they said it cannot be fixed. That which was broken, I am mending it together. That which they said it cannot happen, I am doing it for you. Lift up your hands in thanksgiving. Lift up your hands in gratitude. Lift up your hands in praise. Lift up your hands in thanksgiving. For the Lord, who did it before, that same God is doing it again. Open your mouth and thank Him. Open your mouth thank you, Lord and thank him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Open your mouth and thank him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
want you to lift up your hands for me. And I want you to look at me. What is yours this afternoon has come to you? What is yours this afternoon have come to you? The reason is because whilst we were worshipping, all of a sudden when I looked at where you were sitting, I saw a woman running helter skelter and while she was fleeing, she was leaving keys. And the spirit of the Lord spoke to me and the spirit of the Lord said, there are things that is supposed to come to you. Properties that is supposed to come to you. Blessings and breakthroughs that is supposed to come to you. But there was somebody who was holding on to it and was saying you will never receive it. You will never receive it. But as we were worshipping the fire of God's presence made the woman started releasing the keys. Releasing the keys. And the keys that I'm looking at, it is mostly keys that is coming from Nigeria. It's coming from Nigeria. There are things that have been withheld that is supposed to be coming to you. Properties. Money. But they have held on to it. Compensations that you are supposed to receive. They have held on to it. You have been expecting and expecting. And it has been one deception after the other. One lie after the other. And they have held on to it for far so long. For years. But the Lord is telling me to tell you that today. All those things that have been withheld. Today it has been released. It has been released. There is in my spirit. Yes, come. Yes, it's you. Lift up your hands. Come up for me. Get ready for glory. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. Unusual glory. Unusual glory. Listen, you, the people that knows you here, yeah, they will see you and they will just be looking at you as a common man, ordinary man. But the spirit of the Lord is telling me to tell you that you are not ordinary. What you used to be before you came here, God is going to make you bigger and greater bigger and greater. Because I see you working with great people and working with great people. And I see your faith public domain. Public domain. Public domain. Public domain like, like screen. Screen. I see your face. I see your face. The spirit of the Lord is telling me to tell you that what you used to be before you came here is going to make you bigger, greater than that. Where you are, that is not the place. But today, God is lifting you. Yes. Microphone. Yeah, there was a time I, want, I told my wife I want to go back to Nigeria. I told her when I was in Nigeria, I had to be a lecturer. I know how God made me great. But I came here, I found myself struggling. I told my wife, I'm buying a ticket, I'm going back to Nigeria. She called my, my brother, I said, no, you are not leaving this country. I said, since I find myself in this country, the, what I used to have, the great me here, look as if I'm struggling. And I would sleep every day, sometimes I wake up, I would see myself, somebody gave me 
six billion dollar. I will see it in a dream. I will just woke up. I told my wife, but when I saw a dream in Nigeria, somebody woke up to me, a professor or a governor, they will give me 120,000. There was a time when I was married, about to wed, I was given a car key. I did this, I did this spend money. I don't, if people, I receive money. I said, when I came to this country, I don't know why everything went down. I told my wife, really, I want to go back to Nigeria. He look and see my destiny here. I'm struggling with it. But I thank God. Recently, recently, when I left, when I was fired from my office, that was years about last year, and there was a business that come to me. And the business came to me. And all the job I lost, I got that money. That's why I started coming up. It started happening recently. You are not going anywhere. Because from today, your destiny, your greatness has been uncovered. And there is nothing that can hold it. Because the keys, the keys that they were holding on to this afternoon has been completely re I'm telling you, Amen. you than where you used to be in a, you will be great Amen. than that. Amen. I believe. Amen. You will. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Stand here, bro. Lift up your hands. This God, eh, he operates by an appointed time. Sometimes you will find yourself in difficult situations and you wonder, eh, is God still with me? Is, is he still there? And sometimes he won't speak to us. He won't give us any sign. And we will conclude. Maybe God has forsaken us and he will look at us and he will laugh. All these that I'm saying, I'm saying it because of you and because of what I'm about. When I was ministering to him, all of a sudden, I saw your picture popping up in front of me, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And all of a sudden, I saw that an angel of the Lord was holding a box, but the box looked like um, an ancient jewelry box. Old. The box looked very, very, very old. Very old. But I saw that the angel opened the box. When the angel opened the box, I saw different, 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 different treasures. And mostly they were jewelries. And I saw that the angel put it in your hand. And the angel said to me that say this specifically to her because that is how the Lord wants you to say it to her. He said, tell her that the financial struggle is over for good. Over for good. I see you kneeling down. Tears is running down your cheek. And you are saying to God, God, you brought us here. When you were bringing me here, you made the promise to me that you will bless me. You made the promise to me that you will honor me. You made the promise to me that you will favor me. But God, everything that you said to me, I am just seeing the opposite. God, remember your promise. I see you kneeling down and I see you crying like somebody is dead. And you are telling God that God, this disgrace, let it depart. Let it depart. Have I no 